Hey everyone, this is Kevin Shriver from Your Pet Business Now. Hope you all are doing very well, and thanks as always for watching this video. Please make sure to sign up on the main website, yourpetbusinessnow.com, for updates on the blog, as well as special offers that I send out. I only send some things out via the main email list, so if you're watching this on Facebook or on YouTube and you are not signed up, please make sure to do that. I send a lot of specials and end-of-the-year stuff to everybody on the email list, so please make sure to subscribe to that. Go to yourpetbusinessnow.com. In this video here, I wanted to talk about using WAG, using the Rover, using the, the, the dog walking apps, the pet sitting apps that are kind of flying onto the market. I've had some experiences with people that have used it. I've done a lot of research into this and I wanted to bring you some of that information so that you can make an informed decision about using it or not using it. Obviously, as we're standing here with your pet business, now I tell people how to improve and grow their own pet business. So obviously, I'm a little bit biased. However, I'm gonna try and take this and analyze this with an objective measure, right? If you walk into, if your car breaks down and you go to a mechanic, He's going to say, oh, I can fix it. If your car breaks down and you go to a dealership, they're going to say, oh, you need to buy a new car, right? If you go, you know, walk into a steak and shake, they're going to say, hey, you should buy a steak. If you walk into a vegan store, they're going to say, eat something vegan, right? So <laughs> you have to understand where everybody's coming from. I'm going to temper my energy and my passion for helping people grow their own business with talking about um, the kind of the objective um, analysis that I've done with using WAG and uh, Rover, the dog walking, pet sitting apps. So let's jump into it here. They're like Uber and Airbnb. You guys are familiar with Uber and with Airbnb where you get to request a driver or you know request a place to sleep. The other cool thing about Uber, Airbnb, and WAG with this decentralized command or decentralized operation of the business is you can also be the service provider too. Not only can you request a ride, you can also be a driver and you can be a host. Same thing with WAG. A couple things I see with that. Uber and Airbnb are uh, very, uh, they're very transactional. They've exploded very well, mainly because adults are using it. They are using the service while they are present. That's very important because if you can protect yourself and you can keep yourself safe, it's okay to jump in somebody's car. Um, it's okay to go to someone's house if you know you're aware of yourself and you know how to protect yourself. The challenge with the WAG app and the reason why it may, in my prediction, is it'll probably stay a little bit stagnant long term is because dogs are getting elevated to almost children's status in people's houses. And what that means is, you know, in most people, you, you know, you're showing up typically when they're not there. So they really need to know, like, and trust somebody who's going to be taking care of their dog. So the adults and the people who are requesting the service are going to be gone from the house typically and you are going to come in and work with that dog well what I see because of the increase in dog ownership in an urban setting is that people are going to be more and again with this elevation of dogs to almost children's status it's like a babysitter you would never go find a babysitter and who knows this may change in the next couple years uh, you know, maybe start a babysitting app uh, for, uh, for, for parents, right, where they can request a babysitter, you know, at the drop of a hat. I don't think that happens very well, uh, very much just because the humans and the human owners need to know who is coming in, at least the smart ones want to know who is coming in to take care of their dog. Because of also the increase of dog ownership inside of an urban setting or in just in general, we're going to start to see more and more dogs grow and have more and more uh, kind of bad behaviors, um, you know. And so walking, you know, getting the energy out with a dog is going to be a valuable service as well as training is going to be a key component of this dog ownership. Well, the other side of this is because do more dogs are going to get, you know, be owned by people. They're going to be less trained, less exercised. You're going to start to see dog behaviors. And when dog behaviors get out of control, half of the people work on it, as in they hire a walker or sitter or a trainer to help them. The other half of the people, sadly, will just get rid of their dog. They'll rehome it. Um, and the rescue places are going to be severely, severely overrun with dogs. 
they don't have the capacity or the ability to exercise or train any of the dogs that come in there. So then they send more dogs out in the world who are under-exercised and you know, have been given no boundaries. And so this, this terrible cycle happens. Um, so more people are needing help in both walking and training. It is up to you to determine if you, how you can provide that service. This is a huge, huge opportunity. I've said this before, this is the best time in all of human history to be alive, to be able to work with animals and cats and dogs and make a living out of it. The other thing to be conscious of is if you go on YouTube, they have all kinds of videos, people talking about uh, you know, why uh, WAG is such a good thing, then you should do it. It's great. And these, guys have, these videos have thousands of views. Well, here's the challenge. Most of those people are not actually making most of their money from actually walking dogs. They're making most of their money off of the expected referral fees. If you click their link in their description and you go to the WAG and you sign up, part of your application fee goes back to them as a referral fee. So they are not interested in earning money based on actually providing the service. They're trying to make money off of your uh, clicking on the link, kind of an, uh, it's called an affiliate fee. So be wary of that. They're not actually providing the service. They're actually just attempting to get your uh, referral fee from WAG for promoting, uh, promoting, the, uh, promoting WAG. I personally don't like that because if they're not using it, uh, they're not a good ambassador for uh, the brand. So a couple things I want to talk about here, uh, uh, specifically as it relates to the resources that we have and how it relates to running your own business versus WAG. There's basically th three resources and I have a bonus resource. When I say resources, these are money, your time, and your skills and your ability and I have a bonus one in a second, but money, time, and your skills. Those are three main resources that everybody has. You want to work on maximizing all of those. So wherever you find yourself, I don't care if you have no money, you have no time, and you have no skills and ability, start today, if you're watching this video, start today on maximizing your money. So save, save a dollar, work on managing your time just a little bit today, and read a book so you can improve your skills. If you compound that activity that you did of doing all of those every single day, you'll eventually have the life that you want. And depending on how intense you are at improving your money, your time, and your skills, that will determine your speed, your trajectory, what you get. As it relates to WAG versus running your own pet business, the money thing, let's talk about money first. WAG talks about making a, a little bit of money, sometimes a lot of money. I have not run into anybody that's earned more than more than a couple hundred dollars per month using the WAG app. I have not run into anybody yet that has earned over a thousand dollars per month using the WAG app. However, with running your own pet business, you could be earning hundreds of thousands of dollars per year. I do that every single year with my business. So a thousand dollars a month running a pet business is not, is, is no question at all. And if you actually follow the program that I offer and that I talk about with people, you know, my clients are earning five, six thousand dollars a month by themselves and then let alone if they start adding some people into their into their mix, they could be earning, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars over six figures without any problem. So the money is not even a, a question at all. If you want to make money, you have to figure out how to run your own pet business. Second thing is your time. If you want to manage your time, which I think time is the most valuable resource that we have, you have to start your own pet business because you can't sit around and wait for your phone to beep at you to determine if you're going to work. You need to be planning and managing your day. The WAG app doesn't allow that because you have to sit around, wait for your phone to beep, swipe it to open if you want to accept the job. Well, get your pajamas, watching Netflix, and you know binge watching something. Guess what? You don't have the ability to go get up. Uh, or if you do, you've got to stop everything, get dressed, go outside, drive across town, and that's a terrible way to run your business, a terrible way to run your life as well. You need to plan things in advance. With your business, you can plan where you're gonna be, when you're gonna be, you basically determine your hours of operation. So again, if you wanna manage your time and get your time value, you have to start your own pet business. Lastly, your skills and abilities are valuable. Running a business, without a doubt, will make you jump into the deep end of improvement and personal development. You need to learn so many skills. Now the skills are not hard to learn, but you need to learn the specific skill set that needs to happen in running your own business. 
None of those steps are hard. The reason I know they're not hard is because I've developed them for myself and inside of the online system and the course that I provide. If I can learn it, you can learn it as well. And then again, if you are just waiting for your thing to beep and you're meeting, you know, meeting one dog, that's really not hard. You just have to show up. You know, I'm not going to say it's easy, but you have to show up, go to someone's location, send them a message, you know, say that the dog is returned and you're done. That's a very simple thing to do. Walking one dog at a time is challenge. You figure that out. You're going to want to be challenged to walk more than one dog. You're going to be challenged to walk more challenge you're going to be interested in working with more challenging dogs as well because the more challenging the dog the more challenging the problem that you can help a client solve the more money they'll pay you and the more interested you're going to be if you've ever had a job that's very simple and very easy and not challenging most people get bored in about a week doing it a month at most and when you're bored you'll quit so when you don't have time most people quit using the wag app pretty soon the last thing that I think is even more valuable, kind of a, a, a benefit, or I would say um, my extra resource, is you need to develop relationships. Relationships are the key to running your life. And in particular, running a pet business and running your own business, that is kind of the magic uh, that most people don't talk about in entrepreneurship. They talk about the money, and they talk about the time, and they talk about who you become and the getting of these skills, which is valuable. For me, I think the biggest resource that most entrepreneurs don't tap into is the ability to choose who you want to work with, your clients, and who you want to surround yourself with, which is your team. Because that is really where the fun happens. If you have great people that you're working with and you love the people that you're working with every day, as well as you love the people who you have on your team every day, life is amazing. You are eager to get up in the morning and jump out of bed and get after it. If you have people that you hate working for, you know, you have a terrible boss, you have terrible clients, and you don't know how to get rid of them, or you have terrible people in your life, your life pretty much sucks. And that is a terrible place to be. Not saying that running your own business is going to guarantee to eliminate everything, but you have the ability to choose who you want to keep around in your world. Obviously, based on that, I made a huge sales pitch for running your own business. Don't take my word for it, though. I would ask you and challenge you to go you know, do both. If you're thinking about using the WAG app, go try it and see if you can prove me wrong. I have this, my info, this is my information and my research. I can re repeat all of the research again and get more information back and repeat the process again in a scientific manner. If you can prove me wrong or give me some more information, I would like to know. Uh, if you're earning more money than I predicted earlier in this video, please let me know. I have not been able to find anybody yet. And obviously I have the results of running a pet business so that I can use that as a resource as well as talking to other clients and other people as well that running your pet business is the way to go long term. If you guys have any questions, any comments, any concerns on this video, please leave a comment below and I would be happy to talk you through, uh, help you and answer any questions that you may have. Thanks as always for watching. This is Kevin Shriver from Your Pet Business Now and have a great rest of the day.